Let's do a partial F practice question. So we have a collector of antique grandfather clocks. Sold at auction, believes that the price received for clocks depends both on the age of the clocks and the number of bidders at auction. The collector, whose sister-in-law happens to be an economist, always a dangerous thing, uh, but mentioned that the relationship might be also non-linear, i.e. in some circumstances there may be too many bit bidders or a clock may be too old. Taking into consideration the possible non-linearity, um, a very realist, real uh, issue by the way, uh, the collector decides to include the squared age and the squared number of bidders. Uh, the collector is skeptical about the assertion of his sister-in-law and has retained you to evaluate her assertion. The Excel output is provided below. Okay, so what we're essentially trying to do is determine whether these two variables, age squared and numbers bid squared, belong in this model. Classic partial F situation, right? Got a, you know, two variables. We want to see if collectively the squaring thing works or is an issue. And so we brought both of them into the model together, and we'll evaluate whether they should both leave the model together. <laughs> you voted off the island as a team. Okay, so we have uh, our, our partial F, and so we're going to start off with our, our HO and our HA. Not sure which betas these uh, age squared and num bit squared uh, are. So we're going to look at our output. So we're going to look at our original output. The output with all the variables in it. Okay, so the journey starts in the full model. And I see that the intercept is a B0, beta 0, age is beta 1, num bids is beta 2, h squared is beta 3, and num bid squared is beta 4. So we're going to look and see if beta 3 and beta 4 are both collectively equal to 0. Or alternatively, at least one of those betas is not like the other uh, i and where i is equal to three or four right we're just looking at beta three or four step two uh, we pick an alpha I'm randomly picking 0 0.05 big question is why necessarily this one and I do encourage you to kind of look and start to think about okay in the context of a type 1, type 2 error, what is type 1 and type 2 error in the context of this particular model? Uh, model? Now, weigh which type of error do you want to most avoid? And that really drives your choice of alpha. Yeah? Alpha, remembering being your upper bound or your upper tolerance for committing type 1 error. Step three, okay, so we, we understand there's an F statistic involved, and because I am going to do this by hand and not by Excel, just so that I can show you how the calculations work and so on, um, let's do it with the R squared. So we're gonna have R squared full, right? And we're just getting this off the formula sheet, and we talked about this in the lecture part. R squared reduced, so difference in the R squareds, divided by the number of eliminated variables, which we see is going to be 2, and then that's all divided by 1 minus r squared of the full model, and then divided by n minus p minus 1. Okay, so the num the denominator comes from the only comes from the full model. The numerator has uh, r squared from the full model and has an r squared from the reduced model. So that F, so we're going to look at our output first and we see our R squared for F is 0 0.9235. Okay, I do four, four decimal spots is pretty much as low as you really want to go with these. Uh, if you over round, uh, you can get some results that are, are not that great, a, a little bit inaccurate. So I need the R squared for the reduced model. So I'm going to scroll down to the reduced model here. Right? And there's the reduced model with the squared vari uh, parameters. The variables are eliminated. And our 0.8923. Okay, so minus 0 0.8923. How many variables did we eliminate? 1, 2, right? Be beta 3 and beta 4. So it's going to be divided by 2. And then the denominator, 1 minus 0 0.9235, divided by n minus p minus 1, which we'll scroll back up here, 
And that is just the degrees of fr uh, freedom for the error, or 27. 32 minus 4 minus 1. Okay. okay. So now we're able to calculate our F, F uh, stat. Right now, and we'll, you know, we punch it in our calculator badly, furiously. Now, I sort of recommend you do the numerator first and then the denominator, uh, only because it's so, 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 so easy to make a, a silly mistake, okay? And when you make that silly mistake, just because things are kind of outside the brackets or your calculator does weird things, uh, it's distressing. Okay, so uh, we get the 0 0.0156 divided by the 0 0.00283, and ultimately that leads to 5.5059 with the degrees of freedom of 2 in the numerator, 27 in the denominator. So step three is all is all done. Step four. Okay. So step four. This is a job for Excel. Okay. So now, uh, wonderful Excel moment brought to you by Microsoft in Redmond, Washington. So here comes Excel. Do, 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 do. Okay, so this makes our, our life much easier. Uh, <laughs> looking up uh, values in an F table is kind of like getting root canal done. Okay, so we use our, our, our good friend F.dist. F.dist. Right. .rt. And then our test statistic value, 5.5059. And then the degrees of freedom of 2 and 27. And then close that bracket. And, whoops, we get a nice little itty bitty teeny tiny little value. So very small p-value. Okay. So p-value in that case equals to 0 0.009874. So, very, very small. Okay. Ah, now, step five, usual course of events. P is definitely less than alpha, or any alpha you were to choose. Therefore, we will reject H naught with that uh, alpha, 0 0.05. And then lastly, step six, we can conclude... What? Well, if we've rejected H naught, we've concluded that at least one of the variables belong. Okay, we include that squaring the age and number of bids. Uh, significantly, and you could say improves our model or contributes to our model, or it's just simply significant. You can just mention the two variables and say at least one of these is significant. Uh, hard to kind of get too wrapped up in the, you know, is it something that's maybe really easily understood to a general audience? Uh, but I think it's not too bad. We can conclude that the squaring of the age and number of bids significantly improves our model. Now, it could be that one of them doesn't and one of them does, but we just don't know which one. But you know, they, they are helpful. And that's, that's that for this one. Nice, quick, easy. Excel makes us so much more, more uh, pleasant to calculate.